But how did we get here? Let me take you back, all the way back. For those of you who have been with me the whole way, bear with me for a minute. Two and a half years ago, I developed an app that let me control an LED with my game controller. I was then able to control a motor. I was then able to drive drive axles. Overly confident, I built the car. That car needed to drive, so I had belts, and belts, and belts, and none of those belts worked. So then I used gears. Those didn't work either. So I used bigger gears, and those didn't work either. So then I added another motor and connected it directly to the wheels, and I was able to drive somewhat successfully. I wanted to make it fly, so I added a bunch of electronic speed controllers, and I came up with a design that I thought would push air out to get lift. That didn't work. But I didn't know it didn't work, so I made three more. Still didn't work. So I 3D printed propellers, which are a more traditional approach, but those didn't work. So I made bigger props. Those didn't work. So I bought props off the internet. Those sort of worked, but didn't work. So I made it lighter by shrinking the electronics. I added a gyroscope so that it knew its orientation. Took it to a friend's house, and I broke it. I redesigned the whole thing to be lighter and more streamlined, and I brought that to another friend's house and also broke it. I ran dozens and dozens of tests until eventually I got it off the ground tethered, and then I got it off the ground tethered even better. And I made it even lighter by replacing all four ESCs with one four and one ESC. Placed the electronics with smaller electronics and made it lighter. I replaced the Bluetooth receiver with a long range RC receiver to improve connectivity and obsolete the app that I wrote that started this whole journey in the first place. I multiplexed so that I can optimize the use of my lighter electronics. Printed better and smaller wheels. I got bigger and stronger motors which allowed me to reach a point where I could actually move well. So I added a first person view camera that was arguably terrible. I then crashed and I crashed and I crashed and I crashed and I crashed over and over and over and over again. Then I did a barrel roll. I bought a better gyroscope and taught myself PID control. And then I tuned and I tuned and then I finally got it off the ground without tethers. And then it crashed and broke into a bunch of pieces. So I sat down, I got humble and I asked for help. And the advice was clear. I need a flight controller. I really, really need a flight controller. So I assessed the damage and I started reprinting the broken parts. I then got a Teensy, which should be a better microcontroller that won't need multiplexing, and you guessed it, a flight controller. That means I don't need this gyroscope anymore. I now need to solder the flight ESE to the flight controller. After doing that, I replaced the rear flight hinge and the front turning mechanism. I then bricked two Teensy microcontrollers and decided to figure out how to just use the flight controller. My PWM receiver isn't directly compatible with the flight controller, so I got a new one. Why did they make Signal red? Why? By tricking the flight controller into thinking my drive motors and steering servos were the gimbals of a flight camera, I was able to get my drive controls. Except the turning direction was inverted. So I inverted the wires going to the servo. After doing that, steering appeared to be in the correct direction. So now I had driving. switch I could flip to enable flying. When the switch is off, flying is disabled. Unfortunately, when the switch is on, driving is not disabled. And that will be a problem once this gets into the air. That's where a new technology to me comes in, transistors. These work by allowing current to flow when the middle lead is given a small current. Using this in my application, I can trick the flight controller into making one of the pads turn on and off with the same switch I use for flight mode. By making the flight mode state turn off the pad, I can close the gate to the transistor and prevent the driving and servo signals from getting to the motor and turning servo respectively. And now it works as it should. Driving mode allows driving and turning. Flying mode does not allow driving and turning. And when the safety switch is flipped properly, the throttle properly controls the flight motors, and the right stick controls pitch and roll. So with everything controllable, it's time for a tethered test.
<laughs> literally everywhere on the landing. With that educational lesson on the effects of gravity, let's reprint everything that broke. So I have to replace the prop supports, the wheels, and well, everything. Much better. Lots of recyclable material for use in my other project. The rear left prop dropped in flight, and it seems, relative to the other connections, this solder connection is weak for that back left prop. Let's fix that. Now driving seems to be struggling. I wonder what I did. Well, let's just try flying. That landing sheared the 100% infill carbon fiber PLA axle. Let's just reprint that and then uh, replace the broken one and try not to land like that again. I landed like that again. Let's replace it again. Now let's print rear flight pivots that actually want to stay up. By adding small magnets, I am hoping to bias the spinning propellers upward with just enough force to hold them up, but not too much force so they won't return to the driving orientation upon landing. gotten yet. Let's reprint and replace what broke. It appears that the roll and yaw signals are inverted, meaning that my ability to tilt left and right as well as rotate are backwards, which makes flying very difficult. After inverting those signals in software by swapping the values of the receiver's range, the rotation is now correct. I also added some dead zones since the sticks seem to be drifting just a tad. quite well, but why isn't it driving? Oh, one of the ESCs is off. Oops. To make up for the flipped receiver range, I need to revert the servo wires back to how they were initially. Steering is now correct, which means time for an epic montage.
that's all for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you want to try to guess how much this costs to build, excluding labor and overhead, I'll pin whoever's closest. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See ya!